Previously, we saw how we could take an XML file, load it in, and then parse it into case classes. Now we want to talk about how we can go the other direction. I want to take our case classes and then build XML from them and write those out to a file. So here's our code that read in the students from the XML. And what I'd like to do is I would like to add a new grade to each of these students. So students sub zero equals students sub zero dot copy where we're going to set tests equal to students actually we'll make a new grade Let's see a grade of oh, our first student will go with a 95 and no comment cons on to students sub zero dot tests so we're just taking the old tests that they had we're consing on a new value and we're making that their new tests we're doing that for all three of the students and we can give them different grades here okay so now we've modified them and we'd like to put them back out into a file well if we could build up the XML it turns out there is a an XML dot save where I'm not going to overwrite our original file I'll make a grades to and then I would just need to put here the XML that we want to write out this XML needs to start with let's see with our single element and then in between these we need to have all the information that we intend to write out there which would be our course name and all of our students. Now the course name needs to have a value in here. And so first question is, how do I get variables? For example, I want this variable, just in case we might have altered something, to go inside of here. Well, we can put Scala code inside of our XML by putting it inside of curly braces. And so by putting curly braces course name, we're able to build up our XML uh, using that variable name. So what about all the students? Well, in order to do that, we want to run through all of the students and convert them back to XML nodes. This again is going to be done by inserting some code here. And we're going to take students and we're going to map it across a function that takes a student in and outputs a node. So we have a student from node. How about we make a node from student function. It's kind of going in the opposite direction. It's going to take in a node and it's going to produce a student in its place. Def node from student. This takes in our student and returns back to us a node. The node that we're returning needs to look like this. So it needs to start off with student and then our student has attributes you when you are putting in an attribute value you do not put the quotes but the thing that goes there has to be a string now in this case f name is a string but if this had been an int I would need to put on to string otherwise it wouldn't be happy with it and then l name is s dot L name
And in between here, we need all of the quizzes, assignments, and tests. Well, we need to execute some code. S dot quizzes. And I want to map that across a function that is going to take one of these grade objects and output an XML node from it. And so I'll just write a little function literal here that does quiz and it needs to have an attribute for grade. Here we're going to need to do that two string thing because the grade is not a string. The grade that I want is g.value and I'm going to convert it to a string. And then inside of here I need to have g. comment as the text. I want to do the same thing for assignments and for tests. And of course when I write these out I need to make sure the XML that I'm writing matches. So when I go through the assignments I make assignment tags when I go through the tests, I make test tags. Oop, and if we start it off with assignment, we better close it off with assignment. If we start it off with test, we better close it off with test. Okay. Let's see if we can run this. It printed the CS1, and then we should have a new file called grades2.xml that has our course name in here, has our three students. We have John Doe, Jane Doe, and Bob Builder. Note the formatting is different. The XML that was spit out by the program doesn't have spacing and indentation in exactly the same way that we had it previously. But we have our three quiz grades here. The assignments have their comments in them. And the test now has an additional test grade. You also note that in the original file, a lot of these, like the quizzes, were done as an empty element. We didn't have an open and a close. When Scala writes these things back out, it always puts an open and a close. It will never do an empty element, uh, even if there isn't anything inside of the element. So that shows you how we can build back up XML, how we can use the curly braces to insert Scala code into our XML, and then how we can save that off and actually produce a new XML file from the things that we built.